Hey everyone, in this tutorial, we are going to talk about the cloner. To watch my previous videos, tap on the card shown at the top right corner of the video, and the link is also in the description. So, let's get started. If you have watched my previous videos, you will know that uh, the cloner can be selected from the inspector tab by selecting the object and hitting the plus icon on the cloner. So, you can see that we have these different parameters in the cloner. And we have three types of cloner which can be applied on the object. First of all is radial. You can see that the radial cloner applies the clones in a circular form. And the clones applied is not an object and it's only an instance of the object. You can see that I cannot click on the cloners. I can only select the object on which the clone is applied. So these are only the instance. And if you can increase the count by increasing the count size. And you have a radius which will be the distance between the clone and the object. And we have a start and end values also which can be used to give a start angle and the end angle at which the cloner will start or end. And then we have an alignment toggle which can be used to align the clones perpendicular to the normal of the object. So if I click yes you can see that these angles formed by the clones will be towards the object. And if I click no they will just create a radial pattern. And then we have axis which can be used to apply the clones in x, y and z directions. Then we have position, scale and rotation. This can be used to change the position of the clones respective to the object. You can see that I have changed the position of the x, y and z values. The clones have gotten an offset at x, y and z positions. You can see that if I rotate this object, it is a, the clones are a little bit in front of the object due to the z axis. And they are a little bit above and to the right due to the x and y axis. And then we have a scale which can be used to make the clone size differ from the object. And then we have rotation which can be applied to rotate the clones respective to the object we have. So you can see that we have changed our rotations in the x, y and z and we get this type of thing. And you can also hide the base so that you only get the pattern you like and not the main object if you don't want it. After that we have a linear option. So the linear cloner will apply the clones in a linear form. You can see that the clones are forming to the right. And then we have a count size which can be used to increase the number of clones you want. And then we have a position. This can be changed to apply the clone in which direction. So if I change the x axis, you can see that the distance between each clone is differing. And if I change the y axis, you can see that they are going upward gradually. And then we have a z axis which can be seen if I rotate. So you can see that they are going in a diagonal form. And then we have a scale which can be used to increase the x direction. When we use the scale option, you can see the farthest clone will be longer than the closest clone to the object. And this can be applied to the y and z axis also. So you can see that we get this kind of shape. And we also have rotation values. So if I change the rotations in x, y and z positions, you can see that we get this type of shape. And after that, we have a grid cloner. You can see that when we apply the grid cloner, the clones are appearing in a grid format. We have a grid cone which can be used to change the number of clones we want in the x, y and z directions. So I can set the value as 5 on the x, 3 on the y, 4 on the z. You can see that the x plane has 5 clones, the y direction has 3 clones and the z direction has 4 clones. And then we have a grid size which can be changed to give the appropriate distance in the x direction, y direction and the z directions. And we can also use the use center option which will enable the grid to apply at the corner or else at the center. So you can see that if I apply the grid to be 3 by 3, the object is actually in the middle of the clones. So if I use use center as no, you can see that the main object is now at the corner of the clones. So this is how the cloner works. By using the cloner and the states and event option, I will be creating a simple animation using this cube. So that's it for today guys hope you have enjoyed and understood the tutorial do like share and subscribe and also comment down below if you have any queries doubts and requests 
I'll be glad to help you out. Hit the bell icon to get the notifications and also join the Splendid Squad for updates. See you next time. Bye.